Phoenix and Six. Half the bucks in the series. You're delusional. Your basketball card should be revoked. I need to see more. Yo. You, you Yo, what is up, everybody? Welcome back to Sports Hub. It's 89 Various Times Lit, Aiden Muscle, and welcome back to today, guys. We have another very special episode today for you guys. And today, we're doing our Super Bowl predictions. Aiden, flashback to last year, Super Bowl. We made our predictions in all times for a second, sir. I don't want to brag, but I'm one and no. And you're zero and one. And you're also, and you also have the worst playoff record. So we'll let's, let's put that out there. Um, I got the Magic account. Let's put that out there. I got the Magic account. In this year's Super Bowl, Aiden, we have. The Cincinnati Bengals, who came off of a miraculous comeback against the Kansas City Chiefs in the AFC Championship game. And we also have the Los Angeles Rams, who were victorious in the AFC Championship game versus the San Francisco 49ers. And we have two great teams. And a lot, and this is a star study game with a, with a lot of great players. So, Aiden, I'm just going to do the floor. Aiden, you, you're, you're, you're a big time Rams fan, if you will. Aiden, who do you have in this game? I feel like it's the obvious choice, but give us some valid reasons why the Rams. To be the obvious that. switch for everybody mm-hmm. out there. I mean, I mean, Joe Burrows, I love the hype. I, you know, Joe Burrows, one of my favorite players coming out of college, man. Obviously, the Heisman Trophy winner. Love Jamar. Love me some Jamar Chase. I was with Joe, big Joe Mixon fan. I was a big proponent of him being a top running back in the league. Um, like a lot of players on that team. But, I mean, it's time to be a little honest. Like, I know he's Joe Burrow, Joe Shiesty, Joe Burr, whatever you call that nigga. I mean, it it is what it is, right? But you're putting one of the worst offensive lines in football against the best defensive player in the National Football League. What do you think is about to happen? You're putting one of the best pass rushers in the league against a quarterback who got sacked nine times in the AFC Championship game. What do you think is going to happen? The lights only get brighter. We got home crowd advantage, and I know you like to talk shit, right? Uh, Excuse my language, but I know you like to talk shit all the time about how there'd be more some fan more other team fans and stands than actual Rams fans. But at the end of the day, you're not going all the way from Cincinnati to Las Vegas to Los Angeles. That's not what you do. All right. We're packing that out. Simple as that. And then of course, if you just so happen to get the ball off Jamar chase, you know, you know, it's not going to be a, you know, throw it up. Jamar's down there somewhere type situation. Jalen Ramsey's got that. Jalen Ramsey's got that. Then you're putting your defense and Mr. I talk shit, Eli Apple, against the best receiver in the National Football League this year, this year, this year, this year, this year, Mr. Cooper Cup Triple Crown winner. Then on the other side, you got to try and find someone to help defend Odell Beckham Jr., right? Then, of course, we got our tight ends, and then we got Cam Akers, you know, with his miraculous comeback. Then, again, we still got Matthew Stafford handling and the one of the best offensive lines in all of the National Football League. The score is going to be good, but it's not going to be it's it's going to be a two point. It's going to be two touchdown difference. That's the type of game this is. Like I know the team. Like I know everybody loves the Bengals, and there's all the hype and everything of that nature, right? And we didn't expect them to get here, and they were the underdogs. This is not the time to not bet for the favorite. This is. The odds, when the odds are like completely stacked against you, I know it's a common narrative and a common trope to take on the underdog in these situations, but this is not how it works. Sometimes the best team is the best team, and sometimes that's who wins. It's plain and simple. That's how I feel. Rams win the Super Bowl. They're going to, Bengals are going to put at least, what, 20, 28? Rams are going to be in the 30s. That's how I feel. I'm going with the Bengals. All right. Obviously. And this postseason, I was a little skeptical. Brought this Bengals run all the way from that walk game versus the Raiders. Um, going to the AFC divisional game, going to the New England Seas, Tennessee Titans at their home crowd and winning it late in a, in a late game. And then you go in the Kansas City, you go in the Arrowhead and you win against the Kansas City Chiefs across the AFC Chip. Into the AFC Championship game four straight years in a row. Okay, so Aiden, I'm choosing the Bengals. Now, on paper, you may say the Rams. Of course, you have, you know, all the star set of players. You know, you bring in Matthew Stafford one year ago, and now you're in the Super Bowl. You bring in Bob Miller midseason uh, from Denver. 
Boise acquired Odell Beckham Jr. off of waivers after the whole situation in Cleveland. But I look at this Bengals roster right here. I feel as if in the biggest moments, they execute better than the Rams. And when I say this, it all starts with that offense. Now, of course, you have Cooper Cup, who has statistically been the best wide receiver in the game, the best offense player in the game this year. Of course, you have Dustin Oregon Beckham Jr. Of course, you have Dustin Tyler Higby. Of course, you have Kane Makers on the show. Um, very opposite line, if you will. But Matthew Stafford at the QB position. We're just not going to sit here and say throughout this, these playoffs, when you put Matthew Stafford some critical moments where, where uh, he, he's been shaky. He's, 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 got, the game. he's got above 60% completion percentage, has thrown two, one, maybe two picks uh, throughout every single game, and basically is not – now, aside from that, aside from that key situation – it with San Fran, where he threw that ball up, and that guy just so happened to drop the pick. Other than that, he plays almost completely lights out. That feel. I trust Joe Burrow more than Matthew Stafford, and I feel like this very, very obvious choice right here. The round of course in this postseason is very obvious. So the Bengals, of course, you have Joe Mixon, and of course, I feel like the big. I feel like the Bengals D line is going to get overpowered by the. Rams D-line, of course, that's probably a very obvious matchup. But at the end of the day, Tennessee did too. And they came up with a win. Taking the offensive, you are taking arguably the worst offensive line in the league against the best defensive line in the league. Eight. That makes sense. Burrow got set nine times versus Tennessee, and they still won the game. It doesn't matter how many times, how many times he got sacked. At the end of the day, Joe Burrow still found a way to but win the game versus a very good Tennessee team. A Tennessee Matthew team who beat the Rams in the regular season. Ryan Tannehill. Matthew Stafford is not Ryan Tannehill. He's not Joe Burrow either. That's the thing. No, back to my point, Aiden. You know, you talk about Jalen Ramsey, but we're just going to see and act like Jalen Ramsey is like the second, like most like yards after catch this season. That's like second worst in NFL, Aiden. And then the defense, I feel like, they're, I feel like cool. the Bengals' defense. Him because he is – the best corner on the team, so he guards the best receiver on the team, and the receiver gets a bunch of targets, so the receiver gets some yards on him. That's that's what we're doing now. That that's re- that's really what we're doing. Aiden, because you saw, the, Aiden, you saw in the AFC Championship game how the Chiefs tried to um, what's the word? They tried to double team or take Jamar Chase out of the picture, and guys like T. Higgins stepped up, and guys like Tyler Boyd and Joe Mixon. Those guys, if you try to do that to Jalen Ramsey, you try to put the same game plan the Kansas City Chiefs did on Jet on Jamar Chase. The Bengals, like, where you're coming from, but if you can't get the, the ball off, if you can't get the ball off, then how? If you can't get the ball in the air, then how are you gonna? Then how are they gonna be more, more much effective? And Joe Burrow, no matter the situations, and Joe Burrow, the last course this close season has been put in some very difficult situations. More difficult situations than Sanford has been when the Rams have been this entire postseason. Right, and we've seen him overcome adversity. And we've seen him in the most pivotal situations execute. I haven't seen Matthew Shepard really like do that this postseason. Not as much to the magnitude as Joe Burrow had this year. And that defense, of course, the Rams' defense on paper maybe a little better than the Bengals, but I feel like the Bengals have the opportunity to make Matthew Shepard one dimensional. When I say this, they did the same thing to Patrick Mahomes. And I believe they can do the same thing to Matthew Stafford. You know, of course, you have offensively on Jamar Chase. And I feel like Zach Taylor, same thing goes for the Bay. I feel like both coaches are going to put in a phenomenal game plan. But, you know, you, know, you have to have this nucleus. You have to enter this game. You you know who you know you know Zach Taylor was Sean Mc was under was a, under the Sean McVay coaching tree right? Yeah, they both have experience. You, you know you understand that that that's Sean McVay's coaching style, right? That's Sean McVay's offense. You you understand that, right? Yeah, I do. But Aiden, it's the fact I have a gut feeling. Now, on paper, statistically, you can put on all the players you want, but I feel going to this not- game players on paper if you're putting a defense against an offense that they play every day in practice then what do you think the outcome is going to be hey this is Zach Taylor got to Cincinnati 
both cultures, both game styles, I believe when I watch film on both teams, yes, you see some similarities, but there are a lot of there are a lot of more differences to similarities, Aiden. Of course, you have Bob Miller. Of course, you have Aaron Donald. But I feel as if with the players the Bengals have, I feel like they can go out and execute. I feel like they can go out and win this game. And I really do definitely, definitely feel that way for uh, this member scene. The Bengals right now, they don't have nothing to lose. And the Rams are like, right now, they're in a way down low. They're in a must win situation. If I'm the Rams, this is a must win game. There are for most teams, for both teams, the Bengals have nothing to lose. And I know Joe Burrow doesn't like this underdog mentality. And betting wise, according to the general public, they may be the underdogs. But I feel as if this is their year this year. I don't feel like the Rams will go out there and play to the best of their ability. I feel like the Bengals will do that. And even when they're down, in the most pivotal moments, we saw the same versus Kansas City. When they were down versus Kansas City going to overtime, I tweeted that that game was over. And what did they do? The defense and the offense both executed fairly against a great team, a team experience, experience who has won a Super Bowl, a team who has gone to the AFC Championship game four straight years in a row versus arguably the best quarterback in the league, versus the best tight end in the league, versus the top five tight, top five wide receiver in the league, some of the best defense players in the league, and an offensive mastermind and Andy Reid, and they came back and won that game. Some way, somehow, if they can do that to that team, a team who has won a Super Bowl, Unlike the Rams, they can do that to them, to the office mastermind, Andy, who's a better coach than Sean McVay. They can do the same thing to the Rams. And that's very obvious. That was the stupidest argument that I've ever heard. This one. I'm I'm not even trying to be offensive, but I'm not even like I'm not I'm not even trying to be offensive or bold. I'm just calling it how I see it. And I could be wrong. And you know, I've been wrong many times on the show, so I'm not afraid of being wrong. Right. I mean, I mean, let's lay out the points I just said. All right. You're taking the best D line against the worst O line. You're taking a defense playing against the exact same offense that they practice against every day. You're taking a coach who basically created the offense that Zach Taylor runs and you're putting them out against them. You're putting in some, arguably some of the best arguably some of the best personnel on the offensive side against a defense who I would call maybe even lackluster. They showed up that – a defense who who showed up in that one moment in KC and didn't really show up a whole lot else throughout the playoffs. Yeah, you keep point. Yeah, you keep people from scoring points on the board, but let's be honest with you. Let's be honest with ourselves here. The offense carries that team. Um, point blank period. Yeah, of course we're in win-now mode. I mean, why wouldn't we be in win-now mode? We put all the chips on the table and bet the house on it. That That's plain and simple, right? We're in win-now mode. Our quarterback is in his late 30s. We're in win-now mode, right? Um, It's cool. It's nice that the Bengals are here. I like to see, you know, new exciting teams in the Super Bowl. I mean, obviously, every 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 matchup, I think, except for maybe one that we've done for the Super Bowl, you've taken the underdog. Like, except for one. Like, I took the favorite, like I took the favorite last year, which was in betting eyes, KC. Year before that, I think was the year that I didn't take the betting favorite and I went with the Rams again. And you no, 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 my mistake. That was the year before the year before that. So it's been a it's been a it's it's been a good time. It's been a good time since I've taken an underdog. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna change my philosophy simply because of hype. Hey, if we're taking a matchup between Joe Burrow versus the Bengals D line. Not a matchup between versus Joe Matthew Burrow. Stafford versus the Bengals online. Versus the Bengals, you know, I am taking Joe Burrow, and I don't I'm, care who's on the I'm, other side. I mean, I don't care a, who's on the other side. No, I, know J, I know Aaron Donald is on the This was a quarterback duel. I'd take Joe Burrow, but it's not a quarterback duel. I've been trying to tell you that for like the last 15, 20 minutes. It's not a quarterback duel. It's not. That's not what this game is. Hey. It's not. You're not gonna try and you're not gonna simply turn it into a quarterback duel just because this this there's got you got this new hot gunslinger who's just gonna throw the ball over all, all over the field to his 100 yard catch receivers. That's not what this team is. This is this will not be a defensive chess match. Let's be serious here. This will not be a defensive chess match. I'm this not will not saying, be like a Rams versus Super Bowl. 
match. I'm saying it's going to be a good all-around football game. The point, the fact of the matter is that the offense will win this game. The the reason why whatever team win this game will be because of the offensive performance, and it starts with the QB. It starts with the performance of the QB. It starts with the performance of the QB. And Joe Burrow, I believe, will have a better performance than Matthew Stafford, and that will be the reason. That will be the key reason. That will be the main Let reason. And that will be the why reason think, why the biggest why, 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 why do you think this will be a quarterback battle? Why? Why do you think that? Why do you think that? Because this, I mentioned this just a couple seconds ago. This will be, this will be an offensive. Mind You're game. not explaining why. It, why do you think it's an offensive battle though? Because of the players on both sides, they will make the plays. You will get the offensive firepower. Jamar Chase, Cooper Cup, Odell Beckham Jr., T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd. They will Look make plays. Stopping. Making those plays though. Look at what's stopping. And regardless of who the, on who's a, uh, on the other side, we've seen this throughout the entire season. They will both make all of these players will make plays. And that's what will make this an office of the game. And that's why Joe Burrow will have a better performance than Matthew Sack. I understand how you feel from a quarterback perspective. I really do. But what am I am simply arguing is that it is not a quarterback duel. It is a battle decided on both ends of the football. I believe um, the Bengals will eventually win this game. Not leaving Joe Burrow. I believe in Joe Chase. I believe in Jamar Chase. And that's my pick. And I feel like it will be a very, very close game. And I'm not going to say it's going to be a blowout. But as of now, I mean, right now, my gut feeling is telling me. I mean, I'm not even saying it's a blowout. And my gut feeling is telling me to pick the Bengals in, let's say, a three point game. Now you've got this team even more hype around the quarterback, even more hype around the offense. Jamar Chase, the LSU boys, Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, Joe Mixon. And it's hype and hype and hype and hype and Joe Shiesty, the Heisman Trophy winner. And it's hype and it's hype and it's hype. Hype doesn't win championships. Defense wins championships. All around teams win championships. That is what wins championships in this league. I don't. I don't care what age we're in. The best all around team wins the game most of the time, and that's just fact, not hyperbole. And that's all I have to say. Well, thank you for joining us here on that Super Bowl preview episode. You have to give a Super Bowl like, subscribe, comment down below. Not so much to hit that button, please. Be sure. For post and for your video and from the channel. Until then, this is Mr. Sanders. Hey, I'm Jason Sadie. We'll see you next week post Super Bowl. Good reaction. See you guys. Peace.